for your I, answer. I, I Let's just at, finish it off. I, and then I look we'll at some on. of the, the soap opera in Sam's party, and I look at some of the tragic comedy in um, Emily's party, and I just wonder maybe the problem is that political parties have become the property of small cliques at the top of them. And perhaps it's this sort of incestuous game of, 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 of Game of Thrones that they play. And that UKIP, the uh, UKIP, uh, uh, the, parliamentary UK, the UKIP you parliamentary party is one person, so we it's united. united. <laughs> we are united. And we we, and we had an emergency meeting of the parliamentary party and I agreed with myself on most things. <laughs> so you, you two down there. You, yes. Hi, um, I was just wondering about the theory that um, David Cameron being so passionately inside of the Remain campaign forced a lot of um, kind of Labour supporters who wanted to get rid of him yeah. to vote for Brexit. Do you, yeah. think, do you think that happened? Yeah. I think a lot let's, of people were voting for his yeah. resignation. Right, let's, let's, turn to, let's turn for just a moment to uh, Labour. There's a question from Lydia Forelli, please. Lydia Forelli. Realistically, will Labour ever be electable under Jeremy Corbyn's leadership? That's a game. OK, so on, on paper, I'm a sort of classic Corbyn supporter type person. I haven't voted Labour for, for years, ever since uh, Tony Blair. Well, let's, let's Chilcott sort that one out. But um, I, uh, when, he, when, he got, when Corbyn became the leader, I, like a lot of people, was really excited. He represented a lot of the things I believe in, social justice and all stuff like that. However, what's happened in under a year is he's been incredibly quiet. He's not been loud enough. He's not been dogmatic enough, he's not been forceful enough, he's not held David Cameron to a, a account enough. And I think there's been a disconnect between the things he believes in and his ability to lead the party to a victory. The problem we've got is all the people that are members of the Labour Party, all the people that paid £3 to, to join, they're all still fans of him. Um, and if I was a member, I still would be a fan of him. But he doesn't have any support for his own MPs in the House of Commons, so that's a massive problem there. But for me, the, the thing that really let me down, Emily, was, was during the campaign. I just didn't hear enough from Jeremy. I'm like, where are you, Jeremy? And that, that was the killer blow. This is what's, this is what's probably made... I hate to say it, and I know I'm going to get a lot of stick for saying it, but this is what's probably made him unelectable, is he really let that debate down. If he, were, if he was a Brexiteer, he should have come out and said it. Do you know what? It probably would have been bloody brilliant if he did. If he came out, because he would, have called, he would have called the EU on the things that are actually wrong with it, even though I voted to remain, it being uh, undemocratic, it being bloated, it being stuffed full of elites lining their own pockets. He could have come out and attacked all of that stuff, and we could have had him versus David Cameron. It would be a much more exciting and better debate. So descending into posters of Syrians and immigration uh, chants and stuff like that, it would have been, it would have been a better... Right. <laughs> Emily. You... You didn't vote for him. You voted for no. Yvette Cooper, I yeah. think. Um, and you're kind of the last woman standing now. Um, <laughs> well, 40, 40 people supporting him, including you. It's a bit of a mystery. Um, where do I start? I have no idea. <laughs> I, think, I think that there, you know, after this uh, Brexit vote, I think that we have, and people have said it, we have seen the establishment doing what people thought the establishment does which is just looking after itself. And people have, instead of thinking about the jobs of people in Britain, have been thinking about David Cameron's job and Jeremy Corbyn's job and whether they can get them or not. And I personally think that is irresponsible at a time when our country needs us. Sorry, wait a minute. The, the question, the question, I mean, I don't know what the establishment you're referring to is, but realistically, the, the, Lydia's question was, will Labour ever be electable okay. under Jeremy Corbyn's leadership? I think that, that the Labour Party has changed a lot in the last year and I think it's changed for the better. And I think the reason it's changed is because of Jeremy's influence. I think that the way in which we now talk about austerity and anti-austerity measures is absolutely, we have changed it. We have, you know, in the meeting of the Parliamentary Labour Party when everybody was having a, a go at Jeremy, nobody actually had a go at him about his politics. You know, he has, he talks about as being, you know, the, the politics that he aspires is actually something which has become right. much more mainstream and right. he has achieved that. And in the end, what politics is about is about changing people's lives mm. for the better. So we now have answers when it comes to things like okay. housing, Hang on, I'm going to security. ask Lydia to repeat These her are, question because yeah. I repeated. You didn't take any Go notice on. of me. Well, take I, notice I, of Lydia. No, <laughs> repeat the question, Lydia. Uh, realistically, will Labour ever be electable under Jeremy Corbyn's leadership? Electable is the question. Yes, 
because I think, well, I think, for example, before the before we have any any negotiations with the European Union, I personally think we should have a general election. I think that the that those negotiations should be led by the Labour Party and by our values. Because and by our Jeremy values, Corbyn, of course, by Jeremy Corbyn, because he's the leader of the Labour Party. And I think you know there is a there is a there is a leadership team in the Labour Party. It's not just one person. We are, in fact, although Douglas may say, what did you say? The political parties are a clique at the top. Well, I'll tell you what, the Labour Party. Party is not. We are a third of a million people. Jeremy was elected. No, no. Jeremy was elected by 60% of that third of a million less than a year ago. And 172 and I... MPs want him out of his own MPs. I know, and I think that it is incumbent on us to have some cool heads and to mm. think through what is the best for the country and what is the best for the country means a united right. opposition that can speak clearly. The woman there in the dress on the. Uh, yeah, you. Does Labour left have an anti-Semitic problem? I think that the report that Shami Chakrabarty came out with today was a really, it was a really thoughtful piece of work. And she says that there is a problem, it, we reflect our society. It's not, it's not rampant within the Labour Party, but we ought to hold ourselves to a higher standard, frankly, than the rest of the All country. Right, Melanie, I want to... And politicians in our Labour Party okay. should hold ourselves even at a higher standard than that. Melanie, do you want to answer that point about the lady asked about whether there's a problem with anti-Semitism in the Labour Party? I think there's a problem on the left generally uh, with attitudes to Israel and attitudes to Jews. And I think that Shami Chakrabarti's report is, I'm afraid, uh, uh, it, she, I think she was trapped by her extremely narrow terms of reference, which have simply prevented her from getting to grips with the appalling uh, things that have been said and why they were said by certain members of the Labour Party. And the report is full of platitudes and banalities. Oh. But if I can get back to the question that we were asked, I mean, I am no fan of Jeremy Corbyn whatsoever. Um, I think he is a disaster for all the reasons that we all know. I'm also extremely concerned by what I read about the thuggery uh, which appears to be being perpetrated by the Momentum people, the people supporting Jeremy Corbyn against other members of the Labour Party. So I'm concerned about that. However, I think that the Labour Party's problem is not Jeremy Corbyn. The Labour Party's problem is itself. If you look at the last several years, it has lost millions and millions of its own core vote. Why has it lost them? Because it has no convincing story anymore that relates to those people. The Labour Party, forget Jeremy Corbyn, the Labour Party has become nonsense. basically an Islington dinner party and has lost the faith of millions of working class people. No. The problem, Melanie, the problem, the problem. The problem with your analysis is that if you looked at the last council elections, when everybody said, oh, it's going to be a disaster, oh, Jeremy's a terrible leader, oh, nobody's going to vote, actually, we did better in those council elections than we had done during the right. previous parliament. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, that's right, the right. truth. Yeah, so yeah, you can't just turn your yes. back on the fact that there actually are loads of people who do vote Labour and identify with Labour. We can all see that there are now millions of people who voted Brexit in the north of England and yeah. elsewhere who are right. prime candidates for voting UK right. at the general so, election. The, the, I get, Sam, I'll come to you. The, the man up there... In the just past the barrier there, yes. Yeah, I'm from one originally from Oldham. Yeah. That, you won the landslide, and I can assure you, you put a red rosette on a donkey, they'll vote it in Oldham. I'm sorry, but they will. So, do you think? Um, but we don't put red rosettes. I, I don't, we don't want to insult the voters of Oldham, but do you well, think I'm that, from Oldham, so I can. I can, oh, you I can, can say, insult can you? Yes, I wouldn't. Um, <laughs> but do you think that Labour can win under Corbyn? I'm, I'm a Tory. <laughs> I couldn't care. Well, you can still... I, I, I'm on your mid power. Well, if you're uh, a Tory, I mean, you ought to care. I, you're going to don't well, care. Well, to, to me, he's a liability. So, under Labour, as she said, they're unelectable. So you'd like him to stay, presumably, yes. would you? Yes. <laughs> Sam? You know, if, if you're a Conservative, you can look at the Labour Party and you kind of think, actually, the Labour Party is in such chaos. Why don't... This is, this is brilliant. This should be brilliant for us. But we had the spectre in the House of Commons today where the Prime Minister was saying to the Labour Party, sort yourselves out. This is an embarrassment. You've got a Labour leader from 80% of his MPs are not on his side. Now, that is not good for our democracy, even though I am a Conservative. We do need an opposition to scrutinise this. Because he might have been... He might have been, uh, might have been, he might have been making a bit of mischief, because if a Tory Prime Minister insults the Labour leader of the opposition, 
it's a good chance that Labour people will rally around the Labour leader of the opposition. So maybe oh. he's just trying to keep him oh, there. No, that's a bit deep. Well, 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 that, that, oh, I don't think so. That is sort of a, no? I you think he really no, felt it? I don't it. think so. Don't no, no, well. no, I'll come back to you, Sam. It's, it's almost the perfect, the perfect bind for Labour, because on the one hand, they've got Jeremy Corbyn, who's unelectable. But if the alternative is somehow sort of pro-EU career Blairites, then, you know, they're not going to win with that either. But I think there's something quite sad, because the Labour Party in this country, I think, has generally been, it, it, on many occasions, a force for good. It was a Labour Prime Minister who introduced the National Health Service and the welfare state. It was a Labour Prime Minister who introduced equal pay legislation. It's quite tragic to see the left in such disarray. But, you know, the Labour Party, I think, is obliterated in Scotland. I don't think they'll ever come back. I think they're very vulnerable in the north of England. If there was a credible party with the right values and the right uh, uh, motivation, uh, they could displace Labour in the north of England, just as the SNP has done in, in Scotland. But I think something more profound is, is happening. The, the, the left in this country has always been about trying to organise our lives for us by, by grand design. And I think in a digital age, it becomes impossible for politicians to try to organise human, social and economic affairs by, by grand design. And this makes, I think, the left existentially doomed. OK. I'm going to move on. We've got five minutes or so and left. We are seeing the death of the Labour Party as we know it. You what? You think? We are seeing the death of the Labour oh, Party. Oh, for heaven's right. sake, they will not get the death of the Labour Party. The Labour Party will get its act together. We need to have some cool heads. You were calling for a general election out. a few minutes ago. I want us to have a general election, <laughs> and I think that we should, because I do not trust the Tories to get us right. out of, of, Emma, of Europe without hurting if, people. If, if Jeremy Corbyn... You are the roadblock to reform. If Jeremy Corbyn remains there and the 172 MPs who don't want him uh, challenge, as a challenge by Andrew Legal, whoever it is, and Jeremy Corbyn still wins, and you've got 172 MPs who won't support him because they won't rally around, will the party split? Would that be the sensible thing? No, we mustn't split. Now, I know you say you mustn't, no, but no, will it? No, no, no. How would you avoid it? I think that what we What do you will... do with these 172? Well, as I say, I think that we need to... We're going through a very difficult time. I'm not going to pretend we're not going through a very difficult time. And it's being played out and people can see it. But we need to, people need to remember how important the Labour Party is to our country and a, and a good opposition is to our country. And they need to calm down and think about what is good for the party and come back together again. Emily, okay. you're one of the people stopping the reform that would make the Labour Party an effective opposition. What are you talking about? Well, you... You are the yeah, last and, one standing and, in the and, shadow no, cabinet. No, 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 no. Last the point is, is, is that is that Jeremy has you know, a 60% mandate. We are a democratic party, you know? We are a democratic party. I don't know how many Tory members you're going to have voting in your elections, but we had a third of a million, you know, and that means something. That means something. And your you responsibility know, we are a to large the voters, collective, the country? And of course our responsibility is to the electors, and, and I pointed to the results in the council elections just, you know, very recently, which were good results and were, were, were taking us All in right. the right way. And I'm not saying that, you know, we don't have some difficult decisions to make and we need to to be able to come together and work out the best way forward. We right. are currently in a mess, but we cannot remain like that okay. for much longer. This, this, we'll take one, one last... We've only got a few minutes. Um, Tracy Thompson, let's have your question. And uh, it's for Douglas Carswell, really. When can we expect to see the millions of pounds promised to the NHS? Because we need it as soon yeah. as possible. <laughs> £350 million pounds a week is what yep. you claim, we, we and you see... still stand in front of a poster saying it. I, I, your... ab absolutely. Yes. We will see more money going into the NHS. At That's the moment, right. we pay... three fifty, uh, uh, £100 million a week. <laughs> At the moment, we pay £10.6 uh, billion pounds net to the EU. Approximately half of that, £5.2 billion, that's £100 million a week, will go on the NHS. That will take, come into effect, I hope, when we leave, which will be within two to four years. 50 million a day, you say. What do you think, Melanie? Is it going to happen? Ever going to happen? Or was it just part of the propaganda for your, am, uh, your campaign to leave? I am very hard... I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying very hard to suppress my natural and very unpleasant cynicism um, about political promises uh, like this. But um, it, I, the, 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 the general point remains, I think, valid for me, that by and large, and we can all argue about the figures, uh, Britain is paying a huge amount into the EU... Uh, which is money better spent, would, would be money better spent on essential services in this country. Would politicians actually do so? Well, you know, are they all snake oil salesmen or not? Is a moot point. But I also think, and this may be an unfashionable thing to say, but I think that the problems of the NHS cannot be solved by just throwing more and more money at it. I think there are serious... Yes? 
I'm starting to think that I've been played. Um, one of the reasons that I voted to leave was because of the fact that they were promised that more money into the NHS. And thinking about it now, I'm probably old enough to know better. Um, I shouldn't have put my trust in somebody like Farage. Russell, Russell Kane. Um, I think she's right. Well, I, I didn't believe it to, to start with. I don't think it was Nigel Farage that made the 350 million claim, though, wasn't it? That was Boris's campaign, I think, that made that. They, they yeah, went, and they went, they they went along with it. But so I, I, I never believed it anyway. But it's going to be irrelevant because there won't be enough immigrants to staff the NHS, and then the Tory government will sell it off anyway, so I won't worry about it. All right. <laughs> Sam, we have your quick now because we're coming towards the end. What do you think it's going to happen? It was a cynical attempt, knowing that people care about the NHS, to link the NHS to the EU issue to get people to vote leave. And straight after the campaign, they started welching on that no promise. One, and I think no, that no is one wrong. has retreated an inch from the promise. We have made it absolutely clear that we would like to see. 350 it, it, million it, a week? Would you reconfirm that now? Uh, 100 million a week was the promise. That was you five, said three, on the bus. It said 350 million a week. Uh, that, would that, you that reconfirm that? that? Absolutely clear. It was 100 million more for the NHS. 5.2 billion a year. There was absolutely. You know, don't blind us with science. 350 million a it's, week? It's, yes it's, or no? 100 million a week. There's absolutely. Right. about this, Sam. Emily, your, your go, and we've got 30 seconds left. OK, um, my go, 30 seconds. Um, obviously, it was a lie. Um, there's going to be a problem if we do hit a recession because there will be less money being paid in taxes, because there'll be less money being invested in companies, because there'll be less people in employment, and so people won't be able to pay the amount of taxes necessary for the NHS. So never mind the 350 million, we maybe end up with less money for the NHS. And what happens if you have a referendum like this? You've had basically like a pop-up political party with all kinds of different other people just sort of go, oh, well, we can get up and we can, we can make whatever promise we are, and they won't be accountable because they will pop down again. We've seen Boris Johnson pop off, you know, and, and wait and see how many other people just leave all these promises behind. Mm. All right.